Now as we go to Kings Lynn for International Speedway. Welcome along to Kings Lynn in Norfolk in England for the semi-final stages of the 1992 World Team Cup competition. Well, joining me in the commentary position for this one is former England international John Davis. So I think in prospect, John, is a very intriguing battle. Uh, yes, I think the, uh, the main sort of battle really for the qualification is going to be between England and Australia. Um, with obviously Czechoslovakia and Hungary, they're going to be there and they're going to be capable of winning races, but not really the meeting. We look at Australia and we look at Great Britain or England as it's known and two very, very youthful sides. Yeah, I think um, the British team really have got the edge. Um, although having said that, Australia obviously have got the confidence of Lee having just won the uh, Under-21 Championship where he beat um, Joe Screen and, and Mark Lauren, uh, which are obviously England's very young um, up-and-comers. But then again, we've got um, Gary Havelock riding at number 16, the British team who won the world individual title last week. So a great track action in prospect as we look at the four nations. It's England, host nation, Czechoslovakia, Hungary and Australia. Are they further to do? John and I in the commentary position. Let's go down to the track then and join the riders as they come up to the line for heat number one. So an intriguing battle in prospect as the riders come to the line for the opening race here at Kings Lynn. The conditions are very, very damp and treacherous. A lot of rain around Norfolk throughout the course of the morning. And heat number one, Shane Parker in red for Australia, Zelenik Tassar for Czechoslovakia in blue, Anton Koshko in white for Hungary and Mark Loram for England in yellow and black. And throughout this meeting, Australia will be red, Czechoslovakia blue, Hungary white and in yellow and black will be England. And this semi-final gets underway and shut away from the outside driving across the pack was Mark Loram. Koshko in second place for Hungary. And John, that was a tremendous dive from the outside for Mark Loram. Yeah, Mark made a superb start off gate four and got across on everybody as quickly as he could. Obviously, um, in these conditions, you need to be in front, otherwise you're going to get filled in. So Loram leads. Second place, Koshko for Hungary. Third place is Tassar for Czechoslovakia. And the surprise is Shane Parker back in fourth position. As John and I commentated at the start, we thought the battle would lie between England and Australia. And somebody really wanted to get the points very, very early on. And it's Mark Loram for England who's got the bit between his teeth. And at this moment in time, is looking set for three points in heat number one. Mark Loram on the final lap of the opening race. Looks in tremendous form this afternoon. Of course, he rides here for Kings Lynn and the Home Far League. Round the final two bends of Saddleborough Road to come up and take the three points ring with it. Lorimer gets there. Second place, Koshko for Hungary. Third place, Tassar for Czechoslovakia. And John, first blood to England. Yeah, I think that was a tremendous start for England. It was just the start they needed to boost the team's confidence. Um, I was very surprised that uh, Shane Parker didn't really, uh, his challenge didn't materialise. Um, having said that, Mark's home track, he made a good start and he did everything that was necessary. So congratulations to Mark Loram, the winner of heat number one. So riders coming to line for heat two, Jason Lyons, Australia, red. Bobrell, blue for Czechoslovakia. Joseph Petrakovic uh, for Hungary in white. And Joe Screen from Bellevue, of course, in Home Far League for England on this occasion in yellow and black. Very interesting uh, race indeed, and uh, at the moment, would you say gate four would be quite uh, favourable for England, John? Yeah, I think uh, at the moment, I think gates one and four are obviously got to be the best, especially in these conditions. Um, I, Joe's not uh, a notoriously good gator, in fact, he, he's sort of uh, really not a good gator at all, but um, with the pressure on him, hopefully he can uh, get across in front of them. He'll really need to make a good start off gate uh, three. So here we go then for heat number two. Another rider to watch is Bro Brawl, of course, for Czechoslovakia. He rides here on the Home Farm League for Kings Lynn, so keep an eye open for him. And Jason Lyons having a tremendous season for Bellevue in the Home Farm League as the tapes rise on the second heat. Into that turn they go, and it's rider in blue. Bro Brawl who's got the for Czechoslovakia. So home track knowledge at this moment of time with Lorem in heat one, and now Brawl in heat number two. Second place is Jason Lyons for Australia. And Joe Screen is going to have to make his work from the back if he's going to do anything. Coming up behind Jason Lyons and now coming through to second place already. Jason Lyons is a very tough competitor. To come through Joe Screen with tremendous pride and glory at wearing that England race jacket this afternoon. He's through to second place. Good manoeuvre by Joe Screen there, John. Yeah, I mean, he couldn't even really see where he's going, but um, he showed all the determination and tenacity that he needed to, and he did just enough to pass, um, actually, who was it? Uh, sorry about this, Jason Lyons, but he rode a superb corner there. Brell obviously putting his home track uh, experience to good use here. 
and he made a very good start off gate one. He's just gone away into the distance. He certainly has indeed. So Bobrow looking set for three points in heat number two. Comes up to take the win. It's Bobrow for Czechoslovakia gets the three points. England in the shape of Joe Screen gets two. And a very mud splattered rider there in red. Jason Lyons gets the one point for Australia. So a good win for Bo Brown from Czechoslovakia, heat number two, and that'll do him the world of good, John, in confidence. Yeah, it'll do his confidence loads of uh, good, but um, at the moment, obviously, England, they've got five points from the first two races. They've got to be reasonably happy with that. Um, Czechoslovakia, a bit, of a bit of a surprise in second place on four points at the moment. Riders at the line for heat number three. Craig Boyce from Australia, right in red. Baklav Milik for Czechoslovakia, blue. Zoltan Nadorian, white for Hungary. And Martin Dugard, yellow and black for England. Another good racing prospect. Perhaps Boyce and Dugard, the two to watch, John. Yeah, I think, um, obviously, Craig Boyce is having a superb um, spell in the league at the moment. I mean, I go and watch it pool most Wednesdays, and he is going very, very well at the moment. So Boyce in gate number one, Dugard in gate number four. Watch for those two as the tape tries on heat number three. Clutches drop, the throttles wide drop, and yet again it is Boyce has got there, and Dugard as expected, and Dugard as he got the drop, then the back straight. Boyce and Dugard together, look at Boyce, goes in very hard indeed in the third and fourth turn. There's nothing given in this semi-final, they both want to get through to Kumla in Sweden in two weeks' time for the big final. When of course it's the host nation Sweden, the mighty America, and of course the current team champions Denmark. So whichever one wins this one, it's just one only who goes through. But boys, that was a courageous ride from him, John, so far. Yeah, uh, Martin Dugard rode a very good first turn. I thought he may have just had the edge dropping down into the third corner, but um, Craig forced him out, coming inside him very, very hard. And I think maybe Martin struggled to see where he was going at that particular time, but boys has ridden a very, very good race. So, of course, it was this track last year where Boyce had a very bad back injury in the Commonwealth final so uh, no nerves in heat number three for Craig Boyce as he comes around the final two bends and is going to collect three points for Australia which is good news indeed for the team manager Neil Street it's Boyce that wins second place goes to Martin Dugard a long way back is Sultan Adorian for Hungary who gets a solitary place for third for a spot for of course Hungary so Craig Boyce he must be pleased with life at the moment and uh, that puts uh, Australia at no level with Czechoslovakia John yeah, but all the time England are in there, they're getting the second places. OK, they, they didn't win that race, but I mean, they're pulling further ahead now. They're, uh, they're now three points clear. Um, and if they can keep doing things like this, you know, they're, they're going to be there at the end of the day. Obviously, in this race, uh, we've got the new world champion, Gary Havelock, and uh, against the new under-21 champion, Lee Adams. So this could be quite, a, quite an interesting race. So heat number four features two world champions, as John says. Red, Lee Adams, Australia. Blue for Czechoslovakia, Roman Matusek. Sandor Tahini in white for Hungary. Tiani. Tiani. And Gary Havlock, the new world champion in yellow and black for England. So that's the way they run up for heat number four, with England's noses just in front, seven to Australian Czechoslovakia's four. This is heat number four. Adams in red. Havlock in yellow, and Havlock goes around the outside of Lee Adams on the first turn. Tremendous manoeuvre we saw so often in the World Final and so many times in the Home Fire League this year. Gary Havelock, first blood to him, Lee Adams in second place, being filled in, but a great start there for the world champion, Gary Havelock, John. Yeah, he wasn't drawn off the best start, but he made he made a very good um, first 30 yards, uh, dropped it across Lee, and now I think you'll find he'll just go away into the distance. He's riding, he's full of confidence, and speedway like most sports is a matter of confidence. So it is Gary Havelock who leads in yellow and black for England. Lee Adams tucked in behind, going to be content, I would think, now with two points from this particular race. Third place, Roman Matusek for Czechoslovakia. And so we enter the final lap of heat number four. So Gary Havelock carrying on where he left off in Wachlaw in Poland. Set for three points in heat number four. His first ride in this World Team Cup semi-final, hopefully getting his nation through to the big one in Sweden. It's Havelock's race. He gets three points. Two to Australia in the shape of Lee Adams and one to Roman Matusek for Czechoslovakia for finishing in third place. So a good win and it was looking good at the moment, John, for England. Ten place, six Australian second place. It's looking very good. Um, Australia's challenge hasn't really materialised, but then it's very early days at the moment. Uh, maybe the conditions are psychologically affecting them more than England. Join us for more Speedway after the break. So we move on to heat number five. Shane Parker being excluded for touching the tapes in this particular race. Bo Brell is in blue for Czechoslovakia. Zoltan Adorian white for Hungary. And Gary Havelock, winner of his race, is in yellow and black. This is heat number five.
up with the tapes, the engines roar into action. The first one to show is Royal in blue and yellow. Gary Havelock leads, second place Bo Brell in that order. Then the back straight, that's quite a good tussle there, John. Yeah, Bo Brell obviously was out in the dirt. He's, um, he had the drop going into the third corner, but uh, and he's got round Gary. That is a surprise. I didn't think he'd get around Gary then. So Bo Brell for Czechoslovakia leads. Gary Havelock in second place. Third, Zoltan Adoria for Hungary. And a great ride for Bo Brell. Who, of course, yet again, we mentioned he rides here for Kingsland, so he knows every inch of this Saddlebow Road circuit. Um, this afternoon, it's just a little bit heavy due to the, the rain this morning, and it's very, very windy indeed, which uh, affects them as well. So, Bobrell leads. Second place still, Gary Havelock for England. And with Shane Parker out of things, John, it sort of helps our cause, England, doesn't it? Yes, it does. We're still, um, you know, Gary's not winning the race, but he's getting that important second place, um, which obviously is going to keep England way out in front. Um, and that's all we really need at the moment. So, around the final two ends of heat number five, with no Australian rider in it, it's Bobrell for Czechoslovakia that punches the air as he crosses to get the win. Three points to Czechoslovakia, two to England in the shape of Gary Havelock's second place. The Zoltan Adorian coaching round for one point. So 12 plays eight in England's favour over Czechoslovakia, John, and uh, after five each, I should think team managers Colin Pratt and Eric Bukov are quite happy. Yeah, they're usually miserable. It will probably bring a smile to their faces, but um, yeah, things are really going England's way at the moment. Um, obviously, the conditions are, are playing a large part in things um, with the vision. I mean, the, the guy that's third or whatever on the first turn, I mean, he's literally getting wiped out. Take a look at that there, John, and you see Bo Brow getting out in the dirt, getting his wheels in line, and that manoeuvre was, was sweet to watch, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Gary was, was really sort of pinned on the greasier part of the track where the dirt's moved on the inside, and uh, Brow just got in the dirt and got his wheels in line, and off he went. So we move on to heat number six, Jason Lyons, Australia in red, Zednik Tassar in blue, Robert Nagy comes in for a reserve ride for Hungary in white, and Martin Dugard, yellow and black. So 12 plays eight at this moment in England's favour over Czechoslovakia. Let's see what happens as tape size on heat number six. First one that shows they go in that turn is the rider in red, Jason Lyons, a good start from Jason Lyons, but in blue, to start coming around the outside of him yet again, a repeat of the previous race, John. That dirt, the, there's a firm line building up on the outside now, and that has got to be the place to be in the first turn, especially if, if you're off the outside start. It's so much of an advantage. So to Sarlis for Czechoslovakia, second place for Australia is Jason Lyons and Martin Dugar being filled in by the, the flying dirt here at Saddleborough Road this afternoon. So England back in third place, uh, which is not good news, John, at the moment in time. No, it's not, but um, if Martin keeps plugging away, he obviously has got problems with his shoulder. He broke his, his collarbone twice this year. He's had it pinned, and um, he's lucky to be riding at all, which shows the, uh, the kind of spirit in the England camp at the moment. Very brave young rider, of course, riding for Oxford these days in the whole far league. He's back in third place. All eyes are on Tassar, of course, rides for Ipswich, which is not too far away from Kings Lynn in the circle of Speedway. So Tassar coming around the final two bends of heat number six to pick up three points for Czechoslovakia, which is good news for their cause. Tassar gets there, he wins. Second place, Jason Lyons. In third place, Martin Dugard. And now the gap narrows between England and Czechoslovakia, John. Yeah, I didn't really think it would be Czechoslovakia that was chasing England. I was expecting Australia to, but um, obviously at the moment the Czechs have had a couple of race wins in the last few heats and um, their confidence will be growing immensely. Hopefully England can start putting some starts together. It's a lot of it, I think, at the moment as well is you've got to be off the right start so you're in the right place on the first turn. Let's go on to heat number seven. Craig Boyce rides in red for Australia. Roman Matusek blue for Czechoslovakia. Anton Koshko for Hungary rides in white. And Joe Screen, yellow and black. Joe's off gate one in this race, which, you know, gate one, if you look there, the start is really like a quagmire where the bike's been going over, over the, um, the starting grid sort of through the race. And at the moment, I would think gate one it may be the place to be. Hopefully it will be. I would think probably Screen and Boyce are the two to watch in this one, John, and Boyce on the, or Casey Boyce here. Boyce is in gate number three, so uh, an interesting battle here. Yeah, if I, was, um, if I was Joe, I'd be wanting to get across some front wheels here and head for that line of dirt on the outside. Let's watch them as the tape drives on heat number seven. And there we see Screen going into that turn. Here we wait for Boyce to manage his challenge. He's lost out because Matusek is... Oh! Matusek goes that little bit wide, John, and leaves poor Boyce. He nowhere to go. He really didn't have anywhere to go. If you've been watching the replay here, I think you'll find Joe's coming across, as I said, for the line of dirt. Um, Matusek sort of moved out of the way a bit, but I think that was unnecessary. And um, 
poor old Boise here, hard riding Matusek. Matusek's totally out of control, and I think Boise just laid it down there before he hit the fence, which really was a smart thing to do. Of course, the rider of Craig Boyce's ability is also aware of what happened last year as well here at Kings Lynn. It's got to be in the back of his mind. I don't care how sort of um, brave you are, that has got to be somewhere in the back of his mind. So the referee's decision is to exclude the rider in blue. That's the cause of the stoppage. Perhaps uh... I wouldn't be unhappy at that. <laughs> I'm not well, saying sure Roman's would. wild, but um, it's got to it's got to help. Um, it's really got to help Joe as well here. So screen gate one, Koshko. Gate two white, Boyce red, gate four. This is the restart of heat number seven. And this time, Screen misses the start completely. Koshko in the dirt. Boyce trying to go outside of him, failed to do so. So Koshko, the early leader for Hungary, which is a little bit of a surprise, John, to say the least. It's very much a surprise, but Joe didn't make the best of starts there. And um, he obviously got pinned going in the first turn and, and had to ride the slimy line around the inside. But now he's heading for the dirt. Had overcome Craig Boyce very early on, so it's screen in second place, Boyce back in third, and probably I think Boyce is a little bit shaken with that fall, but uh, good on you, Boyce, keep going. There's Costco still leads for Hungary in white, and uh, having a little spell at the moment in time for Bradford in the home far league. In front, in a commander lead at the moment over Joe Screen, or I'm so screen will try and mount a challenge on him. We're on the final lap now of the restart of heat number seven. Now, has Joe Screen got anything left whatsoever? Koshko down the back straight for the final time. I think perhaps Green has just got a little bit too much to do in this one. The so Hungary going to get a win from the rider in white coming up. Anton Koshko gets the win. Joe Screen has to be content with third place and Boise coasting over for the solitary point. So a little bit of a surprise in heat number seven. It's done England a few favours in a way. It's, it's helped them sort of make the, the break again slightly, although they only got two points in that race through Joe, who was I think was unlucky that... Uh, he made the first start, didn't make the second one, but um, with the checks of Atkins not actually getting a point in that race, it's done us some favours. So 15 to England, 11 to Czechoslovakia, Hungary on seven and Australia on nine. It's pretty close lower on, but England and Czechoslovakia, the early pacemakers here at Saddleborough Road this afternoon. We move on to heat number eight, which sees Lee Adams ride in red for Australia. Second place, first time out. Baklav Milik rides in blue for Czechoslovakia. Joseph Petrakovic for Hungary in white, and Mark Laurel, winner first time out in yellow and black and this one could be a replay of the course the world under 20, 21 final uh, runoff for the title job yeah but hopefully this time mark will come out on top this is home track um, just needs to make that start at the moment the starts are, are vitally important so um, Laura off for gate number two yeah, he's well, off gate John. two and uh, lee's off gate three so i mean um mark really has got to be looking at making a start and heading for that dirt again Let's wait for the tape to rise on on heat number eight, after which we'll check on the old scoreboard and a good start for the rider in yellow and black, which is long, oh, and down goes the rider in blue and an untidy heat of uh, Vaclav Milik. What did you make of that incident, John? I blinked. I really... Let's take another look in slow motion. The rider in blue on the eight, so looks across at the other three, and it's fair. Lorem goes out very, very... Oh, and Lorem takes the wheels away from the rider in blue without a question of a doubt there, John. Yeah, you've got to be fair there. Mark did take his leg away going into the corner. Mark did the right thing. He was heading for the dirt. I mean, in this sort of meeting, you've got to do that. Um, oh, surprise, surprise. The referee is time. calling them all four back for the rerun. I think, and I think to be I think fair, Mark's England, a very, lucky a very lucky lad, and so are England on that particular case. So, Lee Adams red, Vaclav Milik back in blue, Joseph Potokovic's white, Mark Lorem yellow and black. The restart of heat number eight. Up the tapes, those engines roar, and the first one to show is yellow and black Mark Loram. Lee Adams tool shuts off and goes out in the dirt and gets nowhere, so Mark Loram leads down the back straight. A really good start from him, though, John. Yeah, I think um, I think Lee had visions of him going out further than he actually went into the dirt, and he hesitated, and when he hesitated, it allowed uh, Petrakovic, I think that is, to pass Yes, him. Joseph Petrakovic through Loram, a good leader at this moment in time, which is good news for England. And certainly Mark Loram with one or two things to prove, not over only Lee Adams, but to get his name fully fledged in the England team manager's thoughts for the final test match coming up between England and the United States of America at Swindon. A meeting you can see here on screen sport. So Mark Loram leads, second place in white is Joseph Petrakovic for Hungary. Third place in Lee Adams in white. Petrakovic looking over both shoulders to see where Lee Adams is. We're on the final lap. No doubting about who's going to win this one, Mark Loram by the proverbial mile leads and Petrakovic's really now trying desperately just to keep out Lee Adams. 
So coming up to take the win, it's Laura McGetts there. And Petrikovic just holds on the second place. So a good scrap there, John. Yeah, I think, um, I don't know if Lee was maybe not quite brave enough to go around the outside of Petrikovic. Petrikovic was looking left and right, and uh, I think he was more worried about riding his man rather than riding his race. And I think uh, Lee became a bit wary of that situation. So a good win then for Mark Lauren, which means England now on 18 points. Czechoslovakia on 11, 10 for Australia and 9 for Hungary. Very close lower on, but England, John, after eight races, have got the breathing space. They've made the break, and uh, that's nice to see at this time in the meeting. There, see Gary Havelock coming up to cheer on the lads, and uh, a good captain, I would say. I think at the moment he's got to be um, ultra confident, and he'll that confidence will rub, rub off on the rest of the team, which obviously is good news for England. So there we see England on 18 points, Joe Screen four, Laurent six, Dugard three, and Havelock on five points. Consistent scoring for England. They're on 18 points after eight races and in pole position at this moment in time. Second place goes to, or sorry, third place goes to Australia. They're on 10, Lee Adams 3, Craig Boyce 4, Jason Lyons on 3, and poor old Shane Parker not only things all his own way this afternoon, failed to score and won exclusion. So Australia is on 10 points. Czechoslovakia on 11, Tassar 4, Bro Bra on 6, Matusek 1, and the unfortunate Milik failing to score in two outings. Their total is 11 points. And last but by no means least are Hungary in this semi-final of the World Team Championship. There are nine points. Adorian two, Petrakovic two, Koshko five. Join us for more Speedway from Kings Lynn after break. So team managers to the forefront in heat number nine. Three changes to the programme, replacing Shane Parker's Glenn Doyle, former Australian champion, he rides in red. Peter van der Vek for Czechoslovakia rides in blue, replacing Bakar Milek. Robert Nagy coming in in white for Hungary and Joe Screen yellow and black. This, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, is heat number nine. Up go the tapes, the bikes roar into that first turn. And the first one to show is red, Glenn Doyle. Doyle in red. Oh, and down goes the rider in yellow and black, Joe Screen. An unfortunate accident, John, and uh, yet again, just drifting out wide. Yeah, they're all heading for that, uh, for that piece of grip in the middle there. All and um, obviously uh, Joe was in the wrong place at the wrong time here. Uh, Doyle got moved out and in turn obviously hit Joe's front wheel and Joe came down. Hopefully he'll be OK. So nice to see Joe Screen on his feet again and able to take his place in the restart of heat number nine. He's got a second bite of the cherry here. He and certainly has, John. Hopefully yeah. he can make the most of it. That's right. In this sort of field, really, we should be looking for three points. We, I say England, Definitely. of course. Definitely. So the rerun, of course, of heat number nine. Doyle red, Van der Rick blue, Nagy white. Joe Screen, yellow and black, the restart of heat number nine. The first one to show, yes, Screen gets a good start, drives around the turn, that one, and that was a sweet start, but just look at Doyle again. Doyle on the inside of him, a brave move by Glenn Doyle, but Screen keeps that throttle wide open, John. Yeah, he had his wheels in line, he just dropped it on uh, Glenn Doyle coming down the back straight, and obviously Doyle had to shut the throttle off. So, Joe Screen for England leads, second place is Glenn Doyle for Australia. Peter van der Rijk for Czechoslovakia in third position. But this is good news for England as they begin just to pull clear of the other three nations, which is, well, good news indeed with the conditions they are this afternoon. It's nice to have that sort of lead under your belt. And with the way and the youthful policy that Colin Pratt and uh, Eric Bukok are beginning to put into England these days, it's, it's good to see as we enter the final lap of 8-9. Screened by the proverbial marger, uh, John, looking preset for three points. Yeah, he's looking very, very comfortable indeed at the moment. He's just riding on the uh, on the ridge of dirt there, and he's he's getting a very, very good ride. He looks very comfortable at home. So three points for Joe Screen. He wins heat number nine. Second place goes to Glenn Doyle, and in third position goes to Pieter van der Rijk for Czechoslovakia. So 21 points now to England, and the nearest rivals are both Australia and Czechoslovakia, are both on 12 and Hungary on nine points. I'm sure Joe Screen and all the England boys are very pleased with life at this moment in time, John. Yeah, I, Joe was a little bit unlucky there when, uh, when he came down. He obviously damaged his bike and had to change bikes, but the second bike obviously going as well as the first bike. And uh, hopefully we can pull ahead a bit more now. So, heat number 10, Jason Lyons, red, Australia. Roman Matusek, blue for Czechoslovakia. Zoltan Nagorian, white for Hungary. Mark Loram, two weight race wins to his name, is in yellow and black. This is heat number 10. And Lorem on the inside on this one, another good start from him, John. Yeah, him and Matusek, well, it wasn't such a, a good start there from Mark, really, because he got tied up with Matusek on the way to the first turn. That's something you never want to do, is it? Definitely not, definitely not. So coming through so. to take the lead in red is Jason Lyons. Now, can't Mark Lorem make up any ground on him? Lyons red, Lorem 
in second place, yellow and black. Matusek third in blue for Czechoslovakia. And Jason Lyons having one hell of a season for Bellevue in the Home Far League. The early pacemakers and uh, doing very nice. And uh, I've watched him a few times this season. He certainly has grown in confidence. And I think under the likes of Sean Moran and Bobby Ott up there at uh, Manchester with the Bellevue Aces ride, he's certainly having a good apprenticeship. But it's Jason Lyons who's going to win, I think, heat number 10 in good style. Unless, of course, Mark Lawrence has got anything left. But then the back straight for the final time. I think this race is going to belong to the rider in red, Jason Lyons. So Australia looking set for three points in heat number 10. Lyons comes up to take the win. Lyons gets there. Second place, Mark Lorem. Third place, Roman Matusek. And be fair, John, it was a good race win for Jason Lyons. Yes, it was. Um, I think had Joe got clear of Matusek on the way to the first turn, he'd have, he'd have stood a lot better chance of, um, of catching Lyons. But uh, Matusek got in the way, that speedway. He rode very hard on the way to the first turn. It was unfortunate for, um, for Mark, but there we go. So, a good win for Jason Lyons, heat number 10. We move on to heat number 11. And it is Glendor coming in for his second reserve ride for Australia in red. Zednik Tassar is in blue. Joseph Petrakovic in white for Hungary. And Gary Havelock is in yellow and black for England. And I would think yet again, Havelock and Doyle, perhaps the two to watch with Tassar thrown yeah. in as a spoiler. I think um, Tassar is very underrated. He could well be a spoiler, but Havelock should have this one his own way. So the race underway, heat number 11. Havelock on the outside, trying around. All of them, what a sweet manoeuvre by the current world champion. Class confidence, determination oozing out of him there, John. He's looking very, very classy and he's obviously on the crest of a wave at the moment. So, Gary Havelock leads. Second place in white is Petra Kovic. Glenn Doyle in red coming around the outside of Tassar. Good move by Glenn Doyle, the former Australian champion. Got his sights now set on Joseph Petra Kovic. Gary Havelock unaware of what's going on behind him. Petra Kovic in white. Doyle in red, watch for these two in heat number 11. Oh, and Doyle goes over the white line but comes through to take second place. So Doyle now through to second place for Australia, which is going to do their cause a world of good. We enter the final lap of heat number 11 with Gary Havelock, the easy leader, and unaware of what was going on behind him, but a great move by Glenn Doyle, took him through to second place over Petrakovic. But coming round to take the win for England is the world champion himself, Gary Howlock, that gets there. Second place, Australian Glenn Doyle. And in third place, coming through, Zelenik Tassar for Czechoslovakia. Good scrap there, John, from minor places. Yeah, I think, uh, I think Glenn Doyle there really, uh, that's the best ride I've seen him have for a very long time. He, he went over the white line going in the first turn, but only with his front wheel, which obviously is allowed. Um, and he, he rode an intelligent, hard race, and all credit to him. So after heat number 11, England on 26, 17 to Australia, 14 Czechoslovakia and Hungary on 9. We move on to heat number 12, which sees Lee Adams ride in red for Australia. Bo Brau rides in blue for Czechoslovakia. Anton Koshko in white for Hungary. Martin Dugard is replaced by Calvin Tatum. And a tactical ploy by the England camp is Tatum hits the front, John. Yeah, he made a good start. He's renowned as being a good starter, but Lee's ridden right around the dirt line and, and got in front going down the back straight. So, Lee Adams leaves, the current world under-21 champion, who, of course, took that title in Pfaffenhofen in Germany. And I don't recommend you try and say that after about four points of Stella. But it is Lee Adams who leaves. Second place is Calvin Tatum for England. Third position, Anton Koshko for Hungary. But Lee Adams, a very classy rider and very young John. Yeah, he rides the same club as me at Swindon. Um, obviously, I see a lot of him. I think he's a very, very classy rider. He's sometimes a little suspect when, when people get physical on the track. Um, but at the moment, he's, he's putting a very, very good four laps together here. Going a little bit wide there, but uh, he's out in the dirt. Nearly the John Davis kiss of death. But it's Lee Adams down the back straight for the final time for Australia's heat number 12. Still in second place is Calvin Tatum for England, just making sure that Lee Adams doesn't go to sleep. But coming up to take the win is Adams that gets here. Second place is John Davis. And in third place is, and, oh, sorry, John Davis. Third, second place for Calvin Tatum. I've got you on your brain, sir. And in third place for Hungary is Anton Koshko. But a good win for Lee Adams from the back over Calvin Tatum. So the score is on the board. England now with an eight-point lead over Australia and then six points behind further Czechoslovakia. And the two nations begin to pull away, John. Yes, they are. Originally, as we thought, they were going to be the two, the two main uh, nations. Australia had a bad start, which obviously was England's good fortune, really, because um, they've consolidated a you know, sort of reasonable lead now. Good scoring too, Joe Screen, Mark Lorem. They're very Gavala. solid. Very solid They're very, indeed. very solid. Australia on 20, and uh, as we thought, Jason Lyons, Boyce and Adams doing the bulk of the scoring. Yeah. Craig started off well when it was uh, when it was a bit wet and heavy, but Lee's starting to come good now. So um, 
I don't think England are totally clear yet, but uh, I think they're on their way. Czechoslovakia to Saar on five and Bel Bobral doing a very good job for them on six. Their total after 12 heats is 14 points and really it's fair to say they're just in spoiling things now they're for the fading. They they're, are fading. They're definitely fading. And Hungary, the last nation on 10 points, Zoltan Adorian two, Koshko on six, Petrakovic two. Join us for the conclusion of this World Team Cup semi-final after break. Sweden host nation, America and the reigning champions Denmark. Heat 13, Jason Lyons red, Pieter van der Rijk blue, Anton Koschko is in yellow and black and Gary Havelock, sorry in yellow and black is Gary Havelock, Koschko in white and a good gate by Gary Havelock is seen into the forefront early on in this race. Jason Lyons to make it up tremendous ground in second position. Van der Rijk, the reserve coming in, being replaced should I say, with Milek who is the unfortunate rider. So a little few problems for Czechoslovakia, but they are out of things along with Hungary at the moment. All eyes are on Australia and England, who are still the pacemakers here, as expected at the start of this programme. But Gary Havelock, John, at this moment in time, has got things all his own way. Yes, he has. Um, Lyons rode a good first two laps and made up quite a bit of ground, or pulled himself clear of the, uh, the other two, but um, he's not really making too much of an impression on Gary at the moment, and you wouldn't really expect him to. So the final lap of heat number 13, Gary Havelock, the current world individual speedway champion, uh, from over here at Screen Sport, Gary, many, many congratulations and let's hope you have a good year as a world champion. Havelock leads, coming around the final two bends, coming up to take the three points in this semi-final, heat number 13. Havelock's race, second place goes to Jason Lyons for Australia. Anton Koshko gets one point in white for finishing in third position. So, 31 points to England, 22 to Australia. And dare we say, John, as early as, as, early as heat 13 that England are nearly there? I think we're nearly there. I don't know mathematically. I haven't sat and worked it out exactly how many points we do need, but um, we're looking better with every race now. Certainly are. Heat number 14 next to Shane Park. Let's hope his fortunes improve after a bit of a disastrous start by his standards. Shane Park arrives in red. Roman Matusek blue. Joseph Petrakovic is in white. And reserve Calvin Tatum coming out yet again, uh, John. Yeah, I think uh, Martin's obviously feeling the heavy going with his shoulder and um, they've decided to bring Kelvin in, which I don't think is a, is a silly thing to do. He's obviously very experienced, a good gator, and you need to gate in these conditions. Let's watch then for the tapes to rise on heat number 14. Up they go, and into that turn they roar, and number 20 on his back, it's Calvin Tatum who's got there. Tatum leaves, but two second Parker, I don't know, but two second very nearly coming down, and uh, I should think he'd be counting them when he gets back to the pit to see if they're both still there, but it is. Tatum who leads, Parker in second place, but two sec third in that order on lap number two of heat number 14. But Tatum, as John says, a very useful reserve to have. I remember a couple of years ago in Mariestad, Sweden, when America named Sean Moran as their reserve, and he went to a 15-point maximum on that occasion, which took America through to the World Team Cup Championship on that occasion. So is Calvin Tatum's points going to be the difference between success and failure at the end of this afternoon's World Team Cup semi-final. Tatum leads on the final lap. Still Shane Parker in second place. Roman Matusek third. Parker just making his presence felt. Saying to Tatum, hey fella, I'm still here. Tatum goes out in the dirt. Drives up to take the win. Tatum gets a second place for Parker. Third place goes to Roman Matusek. And in the end, John, a comfortable win for Calvin Tatum. Yes, it was. I wouldn't say it was too comfortable the last lap or so with um, Shane chasing him there. I mean, Shane, when he made the ground up and he made his challenge, he made all his ground up on the outside in the dirt, and then he dropped to the inside and, and lost it all again. But, uh, you know, I, I guess he made the choice. But um, I think when you made all the ground up on the outside, you don't drop to the inside then. There we go. Heat number 15 is next on the agenda, which is uh, Glenn Doyle coming in to replace Craig Boyce for Australia's point of view. He's in red, Bobrell in blue for Czechoslovakia, Robert Nagy in white, and Mark Loram is in yellow and black. And Loram looking very, very fast indeed this afternoon, John. Yes, he is. The two home riders obviously on the outside, or the riders that ride here every weekend for Kings Lynn are on the outside. It should be an interesting first corner, I think. Heat number 15, green lights on, up on the tapes, the engines roar into action. Loram and Brow going again, but it's Loram who's got there. Doyle is there as well, and Brow just going a little bit wide. So Mark Loram with the initiative down the back straight. Glenn Doyle in second position. Third is Robert Nagy at this moment. Oh, Lauren does the old wheelie over the line, and Glenn Doyle is not that far behind, John. No, he's not. Glenn Doyle's riding very, very well this afternoon. And he's um, riding aggressively, and he's, he's putting in some good races. Very tough rider indeed. And oh. he comes through to take the lead at this moment in time. A good bend there from him. 
He's riding aggressively, I said it. You said it indeed. And look at Loram coming back round the outside of him. Well, a rider with the confidence of Mark Loram, not only his home track advantage, but second in the World Under 21 Championship. One more lap to go, and have we got anything left? Loram Lees, Doyle on the inside of him. Doyle looks over his shoulder to see who else is coming through, but Loram now surely with his race, round the final two bends of a classic heat number 15, getting his wheels in line, it's Loram who gets the three points, Doyle has to be content with two, and Robert Nagy gets the one point, but a great scrap there, John. Yeah, I don't think Mark really um, even realised that Glenn Doyle was there until he came steaming up the inside of him like that. And I think he was getting a little bit complacent there, but he soon woke up. So 11 points between England now and Australia, which is a breathing space at this moment in time. But Mark Law really is firing well. Let's take another look, John, at this one. Yeah, it's the corner before, actually, where Glenn Doyle passed him, and uh, he came right up alongside um, Mark, and I don't think Mark even knew he was there, but he rode a superb corner there, just running for the dirt and uh, beating Doyle to the dirt. So, Heat 16 sees Lee Adams riding red for Australia. Blue, Zednik Tassar, Zoltan Nadorian white for Hungary. Joe Screen, yellow and black for England. Heat 16, and after this, we'll be having counting down, because in Heat 17, 18, 19 and 20, it's the riders that finish in various positions in their score chart, which takes their place. I'll tell you more after heat number 16, as the riders go out of the start, and the first to show is Lee Adams and the rider in blue, Zednik Tassar, but Lee Adams has got there, and Screen comes up the inside of him, but Adams is where the dirt is. He's got pole position. Joe Screen going to have to come from the back, John, in this one. Yeah, his grass track experience is certainly um, coming into use here. He's right out in the dirt there with his wheels in line. So, Lee Adams, red. Joe Screen, who, of course, finished in third place in that World Under-21 final, now making his presence felt on Lee Adams and comes through to take the lead. What a sweet manoeuvre, John, from Joe Screen. That was a superb manoeuvre. He's definitely riding right on the edge there, and he's totally on the limit, but uh, he's in control, and that's the main thing. So, Screen set for England for another three points. And, uh, well, we're looking ahead to that World Team Cup final, John, as England get nearer to it, and uh, we have to say that perhaps the Americans are going to be the team to beat at the moment. I wouldn't rule England out the way they're riding today. Um, if they can just sort of channel their enthusiasm and, and the, the form that they have at the moment, the thing to do is to hang on to it. It's all on the day, but if they can keep going uh, the way they're going today, they'll certainly be there or thereabouts at, you know, in the final reckoning. So goes. Joe Screen gets the three points, two for Lee Adams in Australia, and one for Tassar finishing in third position. So, without further to do, let's have a few words with the Australian Trump. He's a reserve car, and that's the former champion, Glenn Doyle. So we take another look at that manoeuvre which brought Joe Screen those three points in heat number 16, and round Lee Adams, it was fair to say, John, quite easy. Well, <laughs> it probably wasn't if you were, um, when you're watching it, but um, if you're sitting where Joe was, he was totally in control. He was right on the edge of the dirt. Lee probably wasn't quite wide enough, and Joe took full advantage, and it was a superb corner. Heat number 17, which sees the riders that finished in last position in the score chart. Shane Parker in red for Australia. Dieter van der Eyck, blue for Czechoslovakia. Robert Nagy, white, hungry. Calvin Tatum, yellow and black, the reserve for England. Up go the tapes on the first to show as a rider. Peter van der Eyck for Czechoslovakia. Nagy for Hungary there as well, which is a bit of a surprise, John. It certainly is, but uh, he's been having a good season at Glasgow in the, in the National League. And... Um yeah, he's, I mean, he's improving. He's, I think he's probably riding as one of the better um, Hungarians now. So it is. Van der Eck, who leads for Czechoslovakia. Nagy in second position for Hungary. Calvin Tatum trying desperately to go in the dirt to make up room on Nagy, not doing a lot of bend. Van der Eck leads. Nagy in second place. Tatum in third. Parker at fourth for Australia. In that order, as they go down the back straight, and this is really a little bit the fair to say turn up for the books in heat number 17. The minor two countries having a big say in this one. We're on the last lap. Van der Eck leads. Nagy in second place. Parker coming underneath Calvin Tatum to try and get third position for Australia. There's no doubt whatsoever he's going to win this one. It's Czechoslovakian rider Pieter Van der Eck who's going to have to take the win and to the line. It is Nagy second. But Shane Parker comes through to take Calvin Tatum for third position. A bit of a turn-up job for the books in heat 17. Well, it's a good job it wasn't the last heat decider, wasn't it? <clears throat> I mean, you'd definitely have put Kel uh, money on Kelvin to win that race, but um, things went against him. He didn't make a good start off of four. Um, whoever was on gate three gave him a bit of a rough ride to the first turn. Um, but that, that's the way it is, you know. He, he tried very, very hard, and he got caught out by um, Parker, I think it was, on the last corner. There we see the manoeuvre that took Parker to third position, cuts underneath the gap left by uh, yeah, Calvin Tatum. Was, 
he was going for the gap, wasn't going he? Going for the gap. Heat number 18, Glendor rides in red, who we've just heard from. Roman Matusek blue, Joseph Petrakovics is in white, and in yellow and black, Joe Screen. So Petrakovics two on the top for him, John. Yeah, I, I think he's... Um not going too badly at all at the moment. He certainly isn't indeed, but the Sarider in yellow back, Joe Screen, who dices with him at the first turn and gets there, coming through, Glenn Doyle again, and it's fair to say Glenn Doyle and Joe Screen have both given us some tremendous entertainment this afternoon. Yes, they have. I mean, Petrkovic there made the start, and um, I think it was Glenn Doyle, where he ended up going way past the corner in, in no man's land, and Glenn Doyle rode another very, very good corner to take advantage of the situation. So Joe Screen looking good again for England's call. He leads second place is Glendore for Australia, which is, well, the two nations we fancied most, but England now set to go to Sweden. They're there. They're through to the big one in Kumla, where they take on Sweden as host nations, America, and, of course, the current champions, Denmark. And, uh, well, a very brave man who would bet against England on their form and the youthful side they've got as we enter the last lap of heat number 18. And, as you say, youth is on England's side, John. Most definitely. Um you know, Colin Pratt and Eric Bukov have taken some stick from various um, sides with uh, sticking with the youngsters, but today who can argue with them? They've, they've put the, you know, the rides together, they've got the points, and they've done the business. And so Joe can... Screen gets three points in heat number 18, two goes to Glenn Doyle for Australia, and one for Roman Matusek, and it's fair to say, as John said, it's England's youthful policy paying off, and I'm sure the team managers of Colin Pratt and Eric Bukov are well pleased with life. There we see the lead now, 12 points over Australia, and with two heats to go, it's uh, really plain sailing for the England team. We move on to heat number 19, the penultimate race, which seen Zoltan Adorian for Hungary in white, Mark Lorem yellow and black for England, Zednik Tassar in blue for Czechoslovakia, and Jason Lyons in red for Australia. So let's see if uh, Mark Lorem can end up with a win, John. Yeah, it'd be a nice way for him to finish, um, but I'm sure even if he doesn't make the start, he'll be chasing very, very hard. Um, the dirt line now is it's becoming very very important to get on that ridge of dirt that's there most of the passing that's been done is where people have um, moved the dirt line when they've been in front and the guy behind is taking full advantage so into the turn they speed and it is Lauren who's got them coming around the outside of him is Jason Lyons for Australia good maneuver by Lyons he gets into first position second place Mark Lauren well, I should imagine at this stage, John, now, it's fair to say that uh, is he going to make any silly manoeuvres or just wait for the rider in front to make a mistake? I think if I was Mark, um, I'd be waiting for the guy to make a, a mistake in front, but um, Mark's a very 100, he's a 100% racer. It doesn't matter if he races for four and a half laps, and uh, that's it. You can see now, he's, he, I mean, there's no thought about settling to second place. He's going for gold, as they say. Still it is Jason Lyons who leads. Mark Lorem in second position going out into the dirt to make up any ground on that one. One more lap to go. Still in third position is Tassar for Czechoslovakia. But all eyes are on the man in pole position who's going to do Australia's call toward a good to bump their score up even further. So coming around to take the win for Australia, Jason Lyons who gets there. Second place for Mark Lorem. And in third place, Zedanik Tassar for Czechoslovakia. So a good win for Australia's cause, and it ends a good, uh, what a good season for them, really, John, doesn't it? Yes, it does. I mean, they didn't start this meeting too well, but they've, they've come back in the second half of the meeting, and um, they've made second place their own. If they'd started off better, maybe maybe the uh, you know the scores would be a lot closer now, but um, perhaps they were psyched out a bit more by the, by the heavy conditions early on. So he number 20, Gary Havelock, England in yellow and black. Lee Adams, Australia, red. Bo Brell, blue. Czechoslovakia, Ancon, Koshko for Hungary in white. This, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, is the final race, heat number 20. Into that first turn, they speed, and it is Havelock who pushes the bunch wide. Havelock leads, coming round the outside in blue for Czechoslovakia. And making his presence felt is Bo Brell. Another brave ride for the Czechoslovakian who races here for Kings Lane. What a great ride from him, John. Yeah, he um, he certainly made the most of going around the outside there. I thought he was going to go too far on the uh, third and fourth corner, but um, Gary's coming back at him now, and I think you'll find Gary will actually challenge him and pass him. So Gary Havelock now comes through to take first place yet again. Havelock leads. Second place goes to Bo Brell. Third position is Lee Adams trying to make a pressure now on Bo Brell from Czechoslovakia. But all eyes on the current World Speedway champion in yellow and black, Gary Havelock who looks set for three more points for England in the final race, heat number 20. Bo was almost going too wide there for the dirt. He, was, he wasn't just getting in it, he was, he was going too far. And it's an adverse camber at Kingsland, and once you get over the top of it, it drags you towards the fence and you lose momentum, and that was really what happened then to Bo Brown. 
Gary just rode a superb corner. So Havelock gets the three points to Eng England's quest here and puts them through to Kumla in Sweden. And his captain, what a fitting moment for him to win that final race. Havelock takes the three points. Two go to second man Bobrell and Lee Adams has to be content with one point. So it's England that cruise through in the end on 48 points, 35 to Australia, 23 to Czechoslovakia and 14 to Hungary. And I suppose it's fair to say, John, as we take another look at that ferocious first turn of each one. Bobrell here, I yeah. mean, he really goes for it around the outside. He has got no doubt in his mind that he is going to be in front when he comes off that corner. There we see him go around the outside of Gary Havelock. I think he surprises Gary here. You're probably right. Gary Havelock with the middle of the table, middle of the line here at Kings Lynn. So let's have a few words then with the man who's made it possible to go through the Cumla, the England captain, Gary Havelock. <laughs> right, Gary, another gold medal. It's getting to be a bad habit of yours. Yeah, I wouldn't quite exactly call it a bad habit. Uh, more like a good habit, but yeah, it's great, you know, we've... Uh, this one was a bit of a worry to me. Everyone was really uh, sort of come here thinking, well, oh, this is easy, you know, but obviously yeah, yeah. Um, the other teams came here to, to try and beat us because we were the favourites. And, um, you know, the boys did an excellent job. They never never left the man, kept the man on the job all day. And, uh, you know, now we're through to Sweden. Uh, we're back in with it. Yeah, so what do you think? Have you ridden Kumla before? Yeah, I've ridden Kumla before. It's, it's a great race track. I think it'll suit me. It'll suit a few of our boys. And, um, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean we'll have the same team there as we've had here today. Um, Obviously, we're going to pick the team which is going best at the time and, and which we think can do the best job at Cumla. But certainly, we'll be going there to win. So, wise words from the captain of England. And there we see on the 48, Joe Screen 13, Lauren 13, Havelock on 14, Dugard 3 and Tatum 5. And, John, you've been into World Team Cup winning sides for England. And what's your thoughts on that performance? I think um, today they've outlined the fact that uh, they're going to be a very big threat in the final. Um, I think maybe American, or oh, the American team is going to be the pre-meeting favourites, but um, there's no way you must rule England out. And obviously Sweden, they're going to be in their own backyard. Um, their confidence is going to be very, very high, so it's going to be an excellent final. So on behalf of Tommy Randers and Transmission and TV Media, this is Clive Fisher and John Davis of Screen Sports saying thanks for coming.